relatively smooth uh, procedure. I hope that we continue this. Um, generally speaking, during regular session, if there's a hearing at 1030, people who are testifying are expected to be uh, present at 1030. Uh, we we uh, tried to leave the uh, test, well, not tried, we left the testimony period, sign up period uh, open for three hours up until 1.30. And uh, uh, although the Senate rules don't does not require um, oral testimony, I want you to know that the Committee on Judiciary and Labor appreciates you folks being here and is uh, grateful that you folks would take the time out of your busy schedules to be here. Um, we have nine more groups that, uh, nine more groups, uh, that have in, uh, indicated an interest to testify, and we intend to uh, go through the groups as quickly as possible um, and ensure that all of you have that opportunity. So we are starting with group six. So I would uh, ask the gentleman to please proceed. My name is Joe Spatola, and I'm in opposition to this bill for a lot of reasons, but primarily because you're lumping the religious organizations in with normal businesses. The religious organizations have a right to express their moral beliefs, and they should have the right to refuse to marry or sanction these homosexual weddings. Whether they make a profit or not should have nothing to do with it. The uh, churches and religious organizations are organized under different rules from businesses, and to lump them in together with the businesses and take away religious freedom is wrong. And I, that's one of the main reasons I oppose this bill. The other reasons are, number one, the session, there's no basis in law for the session to even be in existence. Number two, uh, it, the uh, homosexual community is not looking for equality. They're looking for dominance. They wear the colors of Hawaii. They use the rainbow of Hawaii and of God. They should not be using those symbols. Okay, okay. I'm going to finish up with one more thing then. You all up there are supposed to be working for us, not for your special interest groups or for money or for any deals that you might make to pass your puny little bills. It's supposed to be a government of the people, for the people, and by the people, and none of you are living up to that. Okay, thank you. Please thank proceed. You. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, he, as well as members of the, the uh, committee, um, you know, haven't they done a great job? Let's give a hand, actually, for them. They did a great job. They've been here, they've been working hard. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm here to oppose uh, Senate Bill 1, and uh, alongside my opposition, I have uh, over 85 signatures uh, from my church who have volunteered and individually asked me on their behalf to say that they're opposing Senate Bill 1 as well. Um, and uh, just some of the reasons why I say that is because uh, there's, there's been so much talk, and this really is a complex <coughs> issue. And you really have to start to ask yourself, why are we rushing through this process so fast? And there are many issues that should be addressed in this general, in, in, in general session rather than a special session. Religious freedom, parental rights, education, protection for individuals from their freedom of speech. Um, in supporting gay marriage, in fact, uh, we as, whole, as uh, residents of Hawaii, we donate blood. And if we support gay marriage, that will in fact actually affect how much and percent we give blood as well. Okay. So I just respectfully request you to consider this complex issue objectively and wisely and take this issue to general session rather than special session. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Honorable, I'm sorry, Senator. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Honorable Senator He, Chair He, and uh, other Honorable Senators. Uh, my name is Patrick Rory. I've been a resident in Hawaii for over 25 years, and I have gay friends. I enjoy spending time with them but I'm strongly opposed to SB1, and I'm strongly urging you, every senator, every House member, to vote no to this bill, and there are a lot of reasons why. First of all, one minute per person, five or six days, that's not enough time to tackle this amazing, amazingly incredible, complex 
issue. Let's take it to a regular session, 60 days to take a good hard look, get it right. But the best option would to have to put it on the ballot, let the people decide. Second of all, uh, there have been uh, 34 states in our country and California should have been the 35th. 35, 34 states, 35 states have affirmed that marriage is only between a man and a woman. We as Hawaii residents should go with the overwhelming majority and not with the radical minority. Also, um, there have been some incredibly negative effects in Massachusetts and in Canada because of same-sex marriage. Okay, uh, our keiki, uh, there's a good chance that our keiki will be exposed, our curriculum in public schools will be changed. Our keiki will be exposed to these radical books that promote the gay and lesbian lifestyle. If you vote no for anything else, just vote for the, vote for the protect our keiki, vote no, and let's put this to a, a regular session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator He and members of the committee. I'm Elaine Funakoshi. I am opposed to SB1. Um, I'm like Jackie Young. I grew up during uh, when the bombs fell upon Pearl Harbor. The difference was she was Chinese. I'm Japanese. Immediately, we became, uh, we lost our rights. Some of us were interned and whatever. I'm here to, to tell you about how we as citizens of the United States abide by federal laws, citizens of the state abide by the rules, uh, laws of Hawaii and the city ordinances. We of the Christian faith believe in God's kingdom laws and we abide by those laws. And if you will just respect those laws and give us an opportunity to vote on this uh, SB1, I would and that I, we of the kingdom would appreciate it because God is sovereign and he is holy. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha and aloha. My name is Eli Kupi. I'm a senior pastor of Winwood Missionary Church in Kaneohe. I'm in opposition of this bill for religious purposes, the impact on education, and the legislation of one's lifestyle and beliefs upon the people and culture of Hawaii. As a Hawaiian and people of Hawaii, we are entrusted with the responsibility of taking care of Hawaii, not other states. Hawaii is our home. We accept same-sex couples. Anyone who enters our home, eat what we eat, drink what we drink. I don't deny the love that they share with one another. However, you never enter to someone's home in Hawaii and say, this is how you should live. Majority of those in proposition of this bill are uh, in, propo in proposing this bill are not born and raised in Hawaii, and that matters. Therefore, we cannot allow this bill to become law. Don't let Hawaii become like the mainland. In 1840, the first constitution of Hawaii under King Kamehameha III says that no law shall be enacted which is at variance with the word of the Lord Jehovah or at variance with the general spirit of his word. All laws of the island shall be in consistency with the general spirit of God's law. King Kamehameha III uh, was stillborn. My ancestor, Prophet Kapi'e, raised him from the dead, and it was he that coined our, our state model, a life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. We can keep our traditions and our core values while being relevant for today's and future generation on a national and global level. That's what make Hawaii unique and special. So vote no to SB1 and let the people of Hawaii, those born and raised here, vote. Mahalo Thank you. God bless. Chairman He, Vice Chair Shimabukuro, and committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to give personal testimony in support of SB1. I'm Dr. Ashley Maynard. I came of age here in Hawaii, and I serve as professor and chair of the Department of Psychology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today, I will focus my remarks on what my profession has to contribute to this discussion. Happy to provide references from peer-reviewed journals, the standard of evidence in science. Here are several things we know. First, being gay is not a choice. Second, there is no evidence whatsoever that being gay is related to one's ability to engage in a stable partnership, including marriage. Third, there is no evidence that being gay is related to one's ability to parent. Fourth, decades of research point to the clear conclusion that a vast array of family types, including those built upon same-sex partnerships, contribute to stable and humane societies. The doomsday scenarios that have been presented are not based in reality, history, or evidence. There is evidence that treating people equally leads to stability in society. Lastly, though this bill doesn't mention education, as an educator, I wanted to comment on sex ed in schools. This is not a how-to course. It is a public health endeavor, and research shows that for a healthy society, it ought to represent everyone. 
Children in same-sex headed households deserve to be part of the conversation, as do LGBT kids. Let's include everyone. Please vote yes on SB1. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Aloha, my name is Craig Lamb. I stand in opposition to SB1, which, if made law, will do damage to the bona fide rights extended to me and the church I attend by the First Amendment of the Constitution, particularly the clause which prohibits the making of any law respecting establishment of religion or impeding the free exercise of religion. The non-exemption in this bill of owners or operators of any religious facility uh, from the state's public accommodation statutes would place those owners or operators in the position of being compelled to solemnize marriages that are in direct conflict with particular church doctrine. Let not my beloved Hawaii be the first state to attempt to trample upon the constitutional rights of one group while granting what another group seeks through legalization. Please amend Senate Bill 1 to exempt religious facilities from public accommodation statutes in regard to the subject of this bill, or if not possible, within the time constraints of the special legislative session, postpone action on this far-reaching bill until the next regular session of the legislature to give time for due consideration of its impact on religious civil rights. Thank you for receiving my comments and for your dedicated service to the people of Hawaii. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Lola Kao from Kaneohe, and I do not support this special session and SB1. Look around you and see how much of the community has come out here today to express our concerns. Why is it being rushed through in such a short time? Time should be given to discuss, debate, and learn more about this bill that will impact our entire society. Marriage between a man and a woman has been the pillar of not only Hawaii, but all of the world's societies for thousands of years, and you want to change it in just a few short days. I also am a retired public school teacher and am very concerned about the negative and detrimental impact it will have on our children in the public schools. The DOE is not prepared with definite guidelines, structure, and materials to be taught. Give us time. Give us time to discuss and to vote as a people on this very important issue. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator He and members of the committee. My name is Rebecca Carlson, and I'm grateful to you and to God for this opportunity to speak today. Um, if marriage were simply a matter of two people entering into a lifelong domestic relationship for mutual personal benefit, then perhaps the gender of the partners would not make much of a difference. But there is one distinct difference between same-sex and opposite-sex relationships that has not been spoken of much today. The union between a man and a woman is the only one that has potential to create new life, to create children. It is for the children that I oppose this act. To pass this act denies the importance of children to society. It is for the children that marriage between a man and a woman must be afforded the highest rights, benefits, and protections that the government can bestow. I ask you to respect not only my personal belief, but the personal belief of every individual in these islands by putting this matter to a public vote. On behalf of the children, please oppose the Hawaii Marriage Equality Act. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My opposition to this bill is based in part on my spiritual beliefs. I acknowledge that there are those in Hawaii who do not share my religious beliefs. But I want you to know that I feel very strongly that this act is wrong in the eyes of God. And its passage would be a serious mistake. My family and I are all opposed to same-sex marriage. We believe that we are a nation under God, and as such, we will receive blessings as we obey his commandments. We believe marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God, and that sexual activity should only occur between a man and a woman who are legally and lawfully married. Our opposition to this legislation does not reduce our regard for all people, including individuals with same-sex attraction. However, as residents of Hawaii, we ask that you do not legalize same-sex marriage in this state. 
This issue is bigger than the question of equal rights. If passed, this act would infringe on religious freedom and redefine marriage. I regard this bill as potentially the beginning of an eventual contravention of our basic First Amendment rights. If this legislation passes, we ask for stronger exemptions for religious clergy, clergy, religious institutions, religious facilities, and small businesses. I urge you to please consider our views and oppose this bill. Mahalo. Thank you. David Chun from McCulley. There are four reasons why I oppose same-sex marriage. Hosanna, Victoria, Josiah, and Jeremiah, my four young children. Three years after same-sex marriage was legalized in Massachusetts, federal judges ruled that Massachusetts schools actually had a duty to normalize homosexual relationships to children. For example, second graders at a Massachusetts public school were read a book, King and King, about two men who marry with a picture of them kissing. Parents were told that the school had no obligation to notify them, nor allow them to opt out. Before this happens here, I beg you to first stop and think about our keiki. At an age where their minds are so pliable, where they soak up words and ideas like a sponge, is that the kind of teaching that you want influencing your own child or grandchild? As we move toward a vote, I ask just one thing. Please remember Hosanna, Victoria, Josiah and Jeremiah, please remember our keiki, whom we are experimenting with if we redefine the basic institution of marriage in Hawaii. Please vote no on this bill. Mahalo keakua. Thank you. <coughs> oh, uh, before you begin, I am reminded by my terrific clerk. Uh, group 7, you should begin to organize and uh, be prepared to follow the Group 6. Please proceed. Chair He, my neighbor and committee. My name is Jeff Esmond. My youngest son turned one two days ago. My older two children are three and a half, and they've asked if they can have birthday cake every night. If ever there was a couple that believed in family and wanted to have children, it was us. We went through nine in vitro fertility attempts in order to give birth to our three children. That's not easy. Do you think we wanted children? We did. Families come in many forms. For my children, they've had both parents from the day they were born. Unfortunately, their parents, my civil union partner and myself, are not able to get married here in Hawaii. This is our family. Look at us. We represent what so many people here are afraid of a loving family of two daddies and happy children. No one can look at our children and tell me they don't deserve the dignity of having their two parents be married in Hawaii. I hope I never have to explain to them that as a family, we are second-class children. This has been a 20-year discussion. It's time to, mo to move forward. And for my three children and all children, I stand here in support of SB1, and I ask that you do too. Thank you. I am Charles Hill, and I support marriage equality. A week ago, I, I saw two sign waivers with the message, give the people a voice. And I was caught at the traffic light across from one of them, so I did something unexpected. I spoke my mind. Sir, no good change has come for any minority in history when the decision was left up to the people. Just then, to my surprise, a young woman passing by chimed in, saying, exactly. And as the light changed to green, I testified, my partner and I have been together for 17 years. We pay taxes just like you do. It's beyond religion and must end here as the last prejudice put down. Years ago, a famous comedian commented on the anti-gay fuss about equal marriage rights. She said, if you do not want gay marriage, don't marry one. For my partner, Frank, and me who do want to marry, make it happen. You can do this. We can live this. We the people have a voice. We have a voice in you our elected officials. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Enric Ortiz. Uh, may my testimony be put on the record. I'm a citizen inhabitant of the state and 
I am opposed to the same-sex marriage. More so, I'm appalled that you, as the representatives of the people of this state, are not taking into to mind your duty to to valid, make sure the laws are validated that you enact. That's why we have this case against Neil Abercrombie, and this shouldn't be happening because it presents an ass adverse effect to that case. But it's your duty to make sure that all laws are passed and it's valid, not done arbitrarily. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Clayton Coe, Senior Pastor of First Assembly of God. I stand before this body to speak out for the rights of the ones whose voices are not being heard in this debate, our children, who have the most to lose should same-sex marriage be legal. As lawmakers, it is your solemn duty to not just consider the rights of adult same-sex advocates, but also the rights of the children to be raised in a family with a father and a mother. Proponents would say of, of same-sex marriage would say all children need is love, but in fact, children need more than love. They need a father and a mother. Mothers and fathers simply aren't interchangeable. Two women can both be good mothers, but neither can be a good father. Having a father and mother is a basic human right of every child. SB1 not only denies children this right, it also goes against what we teach uh, as uh, is needed in traditional family uh, values. I was one of the 70% who voted to amend the Constitution in 1998 to give our legislature power to reserve marriage between the opposite sex couple. So I really don't know why we are even debating this issue again unless the Constitution means nothing anymore. Um, in closing, I, I get too closing. <laughs> you of all people should know that there cannot be a just society with a constitution that means nothing. The people already decided in 1998. Thank you. My name is Wes Yamada. Uh, I go to church at Mountain View Community Church in Kaneohe. Thank you for, you know, I've been noticing both sides. I've been hearing that they don't listen to us. And I feel for you guys because you do listen. Uh, I've also noticed the crowds outside, a lot smaller than HB 444. I am in opposition to same-sex marriage, but you've heard all the other stuff. I just want to say the process is what is getting me. Governor Abercrombie said that he's doing this to, to give more time, just one session without all the bills. How can you give more time to something important as this in only five days versus a regular session, which is less than two months away? And as he said, oh, we're do, doing this to rush because sort of federal benefits. Can, they can get their federal benefits. But this morning, thank you, uh, Speaker He, uh, Chairman He, for bringing out that point that uh, they are covered if they are married in another state that... that that honors same-sex marriage, they have the federal benefit. So my, my, my point is, why are we doing this now? It's, it needs more time, and it is evident that it's rushed through because even Senator Malama was unaware. And how many more representatives are unaware of that issue that was brought up that it's already covered? So is it a matter of rights, or is it a matter of pushing an agenda through? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Respected members of this committee, my name is Chuck Huxle. I speak in support of uh, SB1. I'm in a wonderful mar marriage with a wonderful woman. The loving relationship my wife and Joy is a precious source of happiness and security in our lives. We are committed to each other, and our commitment has been recognized and celebrated by our friends and family. Our commitment is also recognized by the civil law of the larger community surrounding and including us, and it is guarded by that law. So now I have to ask the question, why are the commitments of my gay and lesbian friends, who are also in loving relationships, not accorded this, the same recognition and security, the protection and the equal rights under law that my community grants to me and my life partner? 
I hear the opponents of SB1 say that this, this bill, granting equal rights to my friends, if passed and enacted into state law, would threaten our marriage. I believe not. On the contrary, the clear assurance of justice for all persons in committed and loving relationships will enhance the joy of our marriage. It will strengthen our ties to our larger community, and we will rejoice in the reality that our community is truly just to all of its members. I therefore hope you will pass SB1 out of committee with the recommendation that it be passed by the Senate, and I'm hopeful that the bill will be passed by the legislature and that as it becomes law, thereby the right of marriage will be extended to all eligible citizens of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Clayton He and members of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, many of you know me. My name is Tambri Young. I have been advocating for this since uh, 2009, the Civil Unions Movement. And this truly is about families and children. Uh, my daughter, who was nine at the time, did not testify during those hearings, but she is here today to represent the children who this is going to affect. Let me assure you that the effects on children, especially mines, will be positive. I can tell you all about the rights that we need and all of those things, but many have eloquently talked about that. So I'm here this time to talk about why it's important that children are allowed to learn about this. And if they're going to teach it in the schools, then that is what we need to do. We need to teach them about diversity, about acceptance, and about honoring all families and the makeup of every family. Okay. Thank you, Tamri. I'm going to just stand here. <laughs> Aloha, Chair He and members of the committee. My name is Shyler Young and I'm 13 years old. My parents are Tambri and Suzanne Young. My moms have been together for 32 years. They weren't granted the same benefits that are given to straight married couples. Our family has had to pay an extra $1,500 to the government this year. If you multiply that by the four years that I've been here fighting with my moms, that's $6,000. So what if their kids will have to learn and accept it in schools? Families like mine are already in our schools. How does our family's happiness and love affect those who are against us? By allowing my moms to be married in Hawaii, it will only give them what every other straight married couple has. Many of the people against marriage equality will, believe, will say and believe that I will be weird, but they don't know that, they don't know me. I'm a member of the National Honor Society. I have a 4.0 GPA, and my first film was in the Hawaii Film International Festival. And so I ask you to support families like mine and to vote to pass marriage equality bill. Thank you. Thank you. Can, uh, could you, can I ask you a question, please? Uh, I, I may have missed it, but you referred to m uh, money that your parents uh, being assessed that otherwise they would not be assessed. Can you can you explain that? Um, yeah. Well, with um, them not being able to be married, um, they have to pay an extra one thousand five hundred dollars. But with allowing them to do this, they can um, they will be able to save one thousand five hundred dollars each year. <laughs> and that is for what purpose? And if you, if you want your mother to answer, that'd be fine. It's up to you. That was based on the pre-tax savings that um, was afforded uh, to Su uh, that was not afforded to Suzanne in order to claim my medical coverage benefits. Yes, with the passage with the fall of DOMA, um, that is now affording us those rights because we did go to Massachusetts and get married. For us, we, it, we will. But for the past, what she's talking about also is the past years that we couldn't. We didn't get that. Currently, I think what which wasn't clear is yes, our families can go to another state. We can fly away and go and get married, you know, and then come back home and receive some of the federal benefits that is going to be afforded us. But it's not all. And the big one I think somebody also talked about was Social Security. Those things wouldn't be afforded to us. This idea that we can just go to another state 
What other couple, what other same, uh, you know, other couples have to do that? The bur- there is a burden. Many of us can't go fly away. Luckily, we were able to, but there's a lot of other families within the community that can't afford that, to do that. So there is a burden. Is, uh, Tamri, is Social Security the big, the big uh, ticket item in your... In, in I think your- currently that's one of those that um, hasn't been resolved yet. Um, and, and I couldn't name off all of them, but that is a big one. And for those people who are of opposite, opposite sex couples that are married, I don't know if they realize what, if how many of them can, can talk about every benefit that they received. Yeah, but I'm sure all of them understand that if one of them should die, that Social Security would help their families continue to live and survive. If Suzanne were to die, and Suzanne is the primary, uh, you know, uh, stakeholder or money our, who uh, uh, supports us, if she were to die, we would be at a loss. Shyla would be, a, bad, be at a loss. We would be at a loss to survive and do the things we need to support our families. That's why when we talk about it's about families and supporting families, those are the things we're looking about. I can, we can, and I'm not the legal person or the taxation person who can talk about those individual things. But I can tell you that on a, on a, just on a level of family, this is what children see. Children see that their family is not being treated equally. That's what it's about. She gets this. She thought, we thought she got it back in 2009. We thought she understood that it was about the rights and benefits and protections, but it's not about that. It is about feeling that they are an important part of society and validating that as a family. When we were in Boston, that's when she, we realized that she realized we were not equal that we were not equal, okay? So whether all the people that want to speak up for families, please let me tell you, we are the family. We are in your schools. She is in your, your children, with your children in schools, learning about all the things that maybe we wouldn't want her to learn about, but that's a part of growing and that's a part of diversity and that is a part of, um, you know, learning about other people. It's not just about Um, your belief. I respect your belief in your church to believe that it's between one man and one woman, but thank you. Okay, Tamri, thank you. Indulge a little bit. Uh, Senator Ihara has a follow-up. So, are you saying that if you did not get married in Massachusetts, and if you were not married today, and if the bill was not passed, then you would have to pay $1,500 more this year? We would have to, yes, that's estimated on, on tax, pre-tax savings. Is si- Suzanne would have to pay $1,600 more. That's not to mention what her company has to pay more. Right. Okay, right. so there's, there's a lot of things that aren't. But luckily, we are married. We are married in Massachusetts, and we went there. But for those that are not married, only hold a civil union, be clear that they are being affected okay. financially. Yeah, okay. Uh, Senator Gabbard has a question. Talk, talk to us, Tamri. Okay. <laughs> Tamri, you mentioned uh, about teaching kids in the schools that it's perfectly fine, but one of the concerns that we've heard repeatedly here and in other venues is that people who pay taxpayer dollars to fund the public schools, they're concerned that they don't want their kids taught that homosexuality is normal. Mm -hmm. And yet when you legalize same-sex marriage, the state is coming in and saying, this is a good thing, it's on an equal basis as heterosexual marriage. So how do you respond to those folks who say, hey, I don't want my kid taught that. Well, they have a different set of values. I mean, I understand your set of values. Their values are different. How do you do that so that they, you respect their personally held religious and spiritual values? Well, I would hope that what they would want their children to learn is to respect people. And if that takes our education system, takes them to make that happen in the best and appropriate way, then I would say that we have to do that. I am upset that teachers would would stand here and actually promote the idea of discrimination. Are we not a society that that has to thrive on tolerance? I have to talk, my daughter has to tolerate what she hears every day from people 
about her family. And I'm not saying that you know that you should have to hear what we what we what we have to say, but I'm sure at the time of the passage of the civil rights movement, many people would have opted out their children learning about civil rights and what that whole movement was about. So we need to move forward. This is not a bill about, about how we give one class of people more than the other class of people. This is about moving our society forward. The Constitution is a living, growing, breathing document that our forefathers put to, to, together that to this day is our obligation to move forward and to strengthen and to build and to give, not to hold back, not to discriminate, not to destroy, not because of fear and any of that. We are not taking any rights away from anyone else that you cannot gain. Yes, you love your neighbors, but some of your neighbors. Talk to yes, us, you Tambry. believe they want to do this, Ta but Tambry, they shouldn't talk, get talk to us. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Any, okay. any other questions? Thank you very much, and uh, thank, you. Thank, thank you to your daughter. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next. Uh, group seven. Thank you. Chair E and Judiciary Committee, thanks for letting me share. I'm Ron Arnold, pastor of Kaimoki Christian Church, and I'm in opposition to this bill. So much has been said. I'll just say a few things. I, too, believe that we ought to be teaching respect and tolerance, but we shouldn't be redefining marriage. Those are two different things. I think it was brilliant um, of the folks uh, promoting this to tie equality to this. It's not really about equality. We, we're equal under the law, but when you redefine marriage, you take a culture in a whole different direction. Certainly, then, I think our founding fathers and mothers had in mind. It would be inconceivable of them to consider this. Uh, there are peoples in our culture that can't marry, and for good reason. Cousins, first cousins, what have you. And we could make the same advocate, uh, or uh, same proposition, same proposal, same argument for equality there. I urge you to, just for the keiki, for the, for the children and grandchildren, the coming generations, to stand opposed to this bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I ask you a question? Would you concede that when blacks were allowed to marry whites, that marriage was redefined? There's an interracial uh, component to that. This is a different uh, statement in, in the sense I've heard many African Americans testify uh, that, that they have no choice as to their race. This We're talking about a behavioral issue that can be taught in the public schools. For me personally, I think that we should teach reading, writing, and arithmetic until our SAT scores get a little bit, bit higher. Why are we trying to do social engineering in our schools? I, I'm not sure what, I, I thought I asked you a yes, no question. I think it's they're apples and oranges is my answer. So that means then that when the U.S. Supreme Court decided Mary in Virgin, uh, Loving v. Virginia that as far as you're concerned, Marriage was not redefined. Is Senator, that what you're saying? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because we believe and have historically believed that marriage is between one man and one woman. When there were interracial, mar interracial marriages, those were between one man and one woman. This is a totally different tack. And I believe the ramifications, the consequences, I'm not sure have really been thought through by many folks that are in the Senate. I, I, I say with all due respect. The Massachusetts resistance folks, uh, they have 10 years of history and statistics that they've set forth. And wow, in every sector of their society, there are devastating consequences. And let me follow up then, since we are engaged in a conversation on interracial marriage at this point. Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, Earl Warren, said in the opinion, that, by the way, was unanimous, that marriage is one of the basic civil rights of man, fundamental to our very existence and survival. To deny this fundamental freedom and so 
on so uns unsupportable a basis as the racial classifications embodied in these statutes, classifications so directly subversive to the print of the principle of equality at the heart of the 14th Amendment, is surely to deprive all the state citizens of liberty without due process of law. The 14th Amendment requires that the freedom of choice to marry not be restricted by invidious racial discrimination. Under our Constitution, the freedom to marry or not marry a person of another race resides with the individual and cannot be infringed by the state. How do you reconcile then with what you've said with people of the same gender, given the statement of the United States Supreme Court? Senator He, when they referenced marriage in that decision that was unanimously agreed upon, do you think that the reference was to one man and one woman in their minds? The, the basis of the case was a black woman and an, who married a white man. So we're talking a, a woman and a man. That's what they understood, right? Yes. That's what they were talking about. Yes, and I am asking you, based on the conclusion of the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, how do you reconcile the interracial marriage with the same gender issue before us today, given the fact that you have concluded, if I understand you correctly, that these issues are apples and oranges? Quite easily, because when they made that decision, they were saying that there is equality in interracially for a man and a woman to marry, as had been historically the case. They had no reference to same-sex unions, and that's why they're apples and oranges. How then do you... How did... Uh, we, we've agreed that we were going to be restrain ourselves, and it's been a terrific day up to this point. And I appreciate it, Senator He. I'm uh, not trying to argue with... No, you. no, and I'm He's not... I, 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 I want you to know that I appreciate your responses because this is the debate that people have suggested is being denied. I think it's fallacious. So let me then uh, follow up with a question that if you believe that Chief Justice Earl Warren was talking about a man and a woman and the reconciliation cannot be done, how then do you conclude with the unanimous decision of the United States Supreme Court in June of this year? which found that the Defense of Marriage Act of Section 3 unconstitutional because of the fact that it denied same-gender married couples in states a, a, a separate classification from opposite gender married couples. I don't deny that many in our culture have changed their opinions, that opinions have evolved in those areas, but. I hope you can appreciate that many of us who've stood on traditional grounds that have been there for centuries, thousands of years, haven't changed our opinion on those things. The governor said that uh, this, that he has not evolved on this issue, but the issue has evolved. And yet a year ago, he told a group of us that he believed that marriage was for one man and one woman. Just shortly after that, he came out for civil unions, and now he's for gay marriage. And I say, I don't understand that kind of rationale. That yeah. seems like... He's evolving uh, on the issue, not the issue evolving, as it has. But some of us have stood on traditional ground. And I think, here's, here's one thing I will say. Uh, we, I, 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 I would appreciate if you would respond to the okay. question. I, I attempted to. I, uh, was I close? It wasn't about the governor's views and the evolution that he's, and, or epiphany that he ha has well, evidently experienced. I think it's experience. relevant, though, Senator. Let me, let me ask you. Uh, I'm trying to stick to a yes-no kind of okay. dialogue with you. Very good. Do you believe that the, in the Loving case, the Supreme Court of the United States was in error? Yes or no? Do you believe that the United States Supreme Court ruling on the Defense of Marriage Act was in error? Yes or no? And... Maybe we can, we can keep about, it like could that. Could you repeat the first one about the Loving Act? I, I, I'd like to hear that one again, please. Your first question there? Well, based on the discussion, and I'm not sure if we should continue the discussion, but based on the discussion we've had heretofore, I asked you about the Loving case, I, and I recited to oh, you the, verbatim. See, I'm not an attorney. I, wait, you got to let me finish. Okay. 
And I, I don't, I'm sorry. you're not an attorney and neither am I. Okay. And, and that's a good thing. <laughs> okay? So let, I'm not apologizing uh, uh, for that. Yeah, okay, and neither am I. Okay. Okay, if we, so we at least have found common ground. Okay. I, I, be, I simply asked you yes. how you reconcile what you said with the, the remarks of Chief Justice Earl Warren in the, in the case Loving v. Virginia, which at its heart was about the redefinition of marriage from white people to a black woman and a white man. Right. And it had to do with an appeal before the Federal Appeals Court, which said, God made people of different colors on different continents specifically to keep people separate and apart. The Supreme Court overruled the Federal Court of Appeals. And that's what the, 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 the chief judge of the Federal Court of Appeals said. So I'm asking you, based on what I read, read to you, how you reconcile the redefinition of marriage in the Warren remarks and the remarks of the United States Supreme Court in June of 2013, which concluded the same gender married couples were at a different basis from heterosexual married couples, that there was a two-tier two system in the United States. Senator, I think we can agree that that court in the civil rights era understood marriage was between a man and a woman. That's, that's what they understood. How do I reconcile that with the new uh, Supreme Court decision? I think they have to reconcile their changing understanding and imposing that on the people, as you folks would have to. It's a different thing. It's going in a totally different direction. Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed. Good afternoon. My name is John D'Amato. I represent the plaintiffs in, uh, in uh, Jackson v. Abercrombie, and I'm here to testify in support of SB1. This morning, a member of this committee asked, why are we changing Hawaii law if same-sex couples can go to some other state, get married, come back here, and enjoy all the federal benefits of, of marriage? I can give you a, a, a reason for that, and her name is Kenna Jackson Clyde. She was born on March 19th of this year to my clients. Um, she doesn't know it yet, but she's a second-class citizen under Hawaii law. She's a second-class citizen because her parents' marriage isn't really a marriage. Her family isn't really a family because her household is one of those consigned to that netherworld of, of civil unions. While she doesn't know these things yet, she'll learn about them as soon as she starts school. If you're a parent, you know how hard it is to console a child who's been shamed because some distinction has been drawn against them. Unless Hawaii law changes, that will happen to Kenna as it happened to that young woman who testified earlier today. When you vote on SB1, I ask you to think of Kenna, think of that young woman, and make their lives better. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been here since this morning, and I don't see that equal rights is the issue at hand today. What I do see is a group of citizens wanting federal benefits. My name is Gail Crabb, and I've been a happily married woman for 35 years. I'm a mother and a grandmother, and I represent the children of Hawaii by asking you, is this, how is this bill if passed, going to serve Hawaii's children by teaching marriage it can be boy-boy or girl-girl? Or are we going to teach that life is sacred and can only be created by a unity of a man and a woman, and so is marriage? In Canada, parents have lost their rights, for all government schools must teach homosexual behavior to six-year-olds. Hawaii's families have rights that need your protection. It's in your hands. I plead with you to please oppose, vote no for this bill. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I am Ella Camacho, and in simplicity, I testify that the Bible is the word of God, the creator of this earth. I know in math, one plus one equals two. I know in procreation, one plus one will give us a multiple of one. And I believe those things. I know that in the same sex gender, that it'll give us a zero, the death of the human, the human factor. I know the Bible to be true, and I know that this book that thou, that each one of you have placed your hand upon to uphold. If it's not done, then we bring a mockery unto God and to this earth. However, I know that his doctrine and his principle will go forth unscathed from time until when it comes again. Thank you. Okay, next. Hi, Dante. Hello, my chair, members of the Senate committee. Um, my name is Dante Carpenter. I'm the chairman of the Democratic Party of Hawaii comprised of some 60,000 members, more or less. Um, I speak in strong support of SB1 relating to equal rights. Democratic Party of Hawaii has long supported the cause of equality for our brothers and sisters of the LGBT community, first in pursuit of civil unions and now for marriage uh, equity, equality. At our state convention 2012, the collective delegation, including representatives from every district on every island, voted to reaffirm that support by passing a resolution, support for marriage equality, whose action items read as follows. Be it resolved that the Democratic Party of Hawaii finds the current state statute defining marriage as solely the union between one man and one woman to be unfair and inconsistent with our fundamental belief that all citizens are entitled to be treated equally under the law. And be it further resolved that the Democratic Party of Hawaii calls upon our Hawaii legislators to pass legislation to ensure that all families are treated equally under the law as required by the Constitution of the State of Hawaii, including but not limited to equal access to marriage licenses. The Democratic Party believes that this is the divining civil rights issue of our time. We support it 100 percent, and we support SB 1 relating to equal rights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dante. Aloha Chair He and Vice Chair Shimabukuro and committee members. I am speaking here today in my own capacity. My name is Kaleo Gagne. I am a Christian gay man and also a concerned citizen. I was married May 24th, 2008 to my husband Greg Feast. Under the eyes of my church, which is Church of the Crossroads, we are a married man. I have heard, I have heard from the opposition to SB1 that the, LGB, that the LGBT community is continually seeking the acceptance. I'm here telling you today as a gay man, I am not looking for your acceptance. What I am looking for is to be treated equally underneath, under the United States Constitution. My husband, Greg, and I refuse to have a civil union because it is discriminatory. The civil union bill allows heterosexual couples to receive either a marriage or a civil union, but I am not given that choice. I deserve more than that because I am a tax-paying citizen in the, in the United States. I deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and with loving kindness. Please pass SB 1 so that I can be treated equally and fairly under, under the U.S. Constitution. My husband Greg and I should not have to leave the state of Hawaii to be able to get married and leave my home where I've been here for 15 years. Mahalo. Thank you very much. <coughs> Aloha. Aloha. I'm Tracy Bennett in strong support of this bill. And I would like to suggest that nobody here has a traditional marriage. Nobody. But if your parents uh, arranged your marriage, then you have a traditional marriage. If they accepted or received, uh, if they paid or received a dowry, then you have traditional marriage. If you're a woman and your husband can beat you with a stick that's no bigger than his thumb, you have a traditional marriage. If you're a woman and you cannot divorce, you have a traditional marriage. If you are of the same race and religion as your spouse, you probably have a traditional marriage. If your bloodline is pure, that would be a traditional marriage. If you and your spouse are of the same religion, maybe you have a traditional marriage. But if you married for love, ah. Uh -uh. That's not traditional. So fortunately, times have changed. Marriage has changed. And this is one more time that marriage should change. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mahalo, Senator He and committee members. I'm thankful that I have the opportunity to speak on my behalf and on my behalf of my husband and my three daughters. My name is Sharon Martin and I stand in opposition to SB1. My family and I stand in truth of God's word and his definition of marriage between one man and one woman. As a mother of three beautiful and impressionable daughters, I am alarmed and disturbed by the ramifications of the passage of this bill on my children and our educational system. I, only, I can look to Massachusetts where this has gone on for 10 years and I have information here with regard to two families, the Parkers and the Worthens, that had filed federal civil lawsuits to force the schools to notify parents and allow them to opt their elementary school children when homosexual related subjects were taught. The federal judge dismissed the case. The appeals judge later upheld the first judge rulings that because same-sex marriage is legal in Massachusetts, the school actually had a duty to normalize homosexual relationships to children, and schools had no obligation to notify parents or let them opt out their children. This is very disturbing to me. I understand that this bill is about marriage equality, but to let this go and pass, the ramifications of it are so destructive. I cannot imagine my daughters being taught these things, and I have no right to say that it opt them out of this. I'm being denied my rights. My children are being denied their rights as well. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Senator He and the committee. Thank you very much for your listening ear today. My name is Joanne Wazinski. I'm a resident of Hawaii, a registered voter. I've been voting for a lot of years, and I take that vote very seriously. And more serious than that, the Word of God says to pray for those in authority over us. No matter who gets in, that's my responsibility, and I take that serious. The bottom line here is God's unconditional love for each one of us. And that's the example I tried to follow today. I do oppose same-sex marriage. I've been, I had been married for 40 years, a widow. And I just say thank you today. And I really ask you to really consider your decision. Thank you, and God bless you, and thank you for all that you've done for our state. God bless. Thank you. Can I ask you a question, please? Thank you for your testimony. Uh, we've heard a lot of testimony in line with the, uh, the genre of your comments. And I've been wondering this, and, and I thought, well, I, I want to f uh, ask this of someone who is uh, uh, well-spoken, kind, and considerate. So it's within that context that I want to ask you this question. And I don't want to offend you when I ask this question. So I want to be clear about that. We have received, I should speak for myself, I have received comments and testimony from Christians who disagree with your position, who have invoked their God. This would include Calvinists, Episcopalians, Methodists, and... Uh, people of the Buddhist faith as well. How is it in your mind that legislators are to evaluate or reconcile Christians for whom they testify on the word of their God, but whose words are diametrically opposite? of each other's words. Can you help us in that regard? Uh, can I answer from my heart? I don't know to, if I can answer that correctly, but not even as a Christian. In my personal life, when I was married, my husband was one of nine kids. Two of them made the choice uh, to be gay. And in that day, that wasn't even a thing to be talked about, but my mother-in-law trusted me more than anyone to tell me that issue. 
And the bottom line still is not about my religion, about unconditional love, whether it's God's love or who's ever love. So I don't know how to really correctly answer your question. Thank you. Uh, uh, that, that's an answer. And your answer is similar to my answer. So thank you very much. God bless you. Aloha, Senator He. Aloha. Committee. Mahalo nui loa. My name is Tracy Ann Kapua Hau. I'm from the island of Molokai. I'm a mother of four, a grandmother of five. And um, I came here today because this is an important issue. I took time off of work to come here because we're talking about the lives of our children. Whether they have gay parents or straight parents, we're talking about our kids. As a Christian, I stand here and I'm not here today to blast you. I'm here to bless you and to pray for you and to just say, I pray you search your hearts and that you make the right decisions. As a Christian, and according to God's word, we all know what that is. And so I just ask you to seriously search your hearts and to allow the people to have a say. As a Hawaiian, I stand here and just say, there's people on Molokai, on, on the island of Hawaii, on the island of Maui, on the island of Kauai that cannot, are not able to be here today to voice their opinions. And it will not be fair to this state to not let everyone have a say. And I pray that you will go by what we say. Ua mau kea o ka aina i ka pono. Aloha, mahalo. We say all those words. But what does it really mean in the heart of a Hawaiian? You can move here and you can, you can come here and you can say, I'm a Hawaiian. But do you have the cocoa? It's not about that. As far as I'm concerned, God's blood runs through my veins. So I'm just saying, please allow the people of Hawaii to have a say. And God bless you for all that you do. And thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am reminded by my uh, uh, first class staff that I should ask for group nine, t group eight, sorry, that, that's not my staff's fault, that's my fault. My group eight should begin to assemble. Please proceed. Good afternoon, Chairman He. Good afternoon. My name is Lee Yarborough. I'm an attorney and CPA, and I've testified in front of this body on many occasions as to the details of civil unions bills, of the reciprocal beneficiary laws, and as well as the present bill before you. You have a detailed written testimony from me dealing with the minutia of the bill. It's two pages. It, it, if you can find it in your apparently 3,900 pages of testimony, you can read the detail. I've analyzed the governor's drafts one and two. I've looked at the Senate bill one before us. I feel that the religious <laughs> exemption is properly dealt with and will provide the appropriate protections for the churches. I think that I've defined in my uh, uh, testimony, my written testimony, the rights and benefits that will be denied the people of Hawaii by not passing this bill at this point. And I know there was a lot of confusion generated this morning. I have served on many committees and, and spoken to many people since June 28th. And I will tell you, there's a lot of confusion. There are three rights and benefits to be afforded married couples who are married in another place. Three out of 1,200 plus in the United States. That is immigration, taxation, and uh, military spouse benefits. Those are the only three out of 1,200 plus rights that are currently afforded someone who goes in a, to another state. There are social security is not to be afforded to people who are married and come back to Hawaii in the similar veterans benefits are not to be afforded. So I know there was some confusion this morning, but people are saying this, you know, you can go to another state and you can get married. And you have a question? No. Okay, Senator Ihara. Thank you, Mr. Yarborough. Can you provide that in writing? Um, so you have, you have an expertise in this area, and you may know more than some of our state attorneys. And if you could outline um, the statutes, maybe, that do apply, and those that don't apply, to the extent that you have that information. Well, as I said, uh, Senator Ihara, in my written testimony that I've already provided, right. I'll, I'll you know, speak to the 1,200 rights and benefits, yeah, but specifically taxation and uh, immigration rights and 
Uh, military spousal benefits are the only three out of 1,200 plus rights that are being afforded. So our civil unions partners in Hawaii, first of all, get none of those rights and privileges. A civil union by law is not marriage. If they go to another state and get marriage, Hawaii recognizes it and come back to Hawaii, Hawaii recognizes that as a civil union. But only those three federal rights and benefits are currently afforded. I mean, I don't know. I can provide that in writing, but basically it's it's really easy. It's three rights out of 1,200. We'll have to find your testimony in, in, in the several thousand that we have. I'm happy to if send you could it email it, that'll be easier. I'll happy to it's, send it to each yeah. of the members of the committee. There's detail there about the bill, the religious exemption, and the rights and benefits to be afforded. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Mr. Yarborough? Thank you very much. My name is. Yeah, you can proceed. Okay, thank you. My name is Joanne Adams. Thank you, Chair He and Vice Chair Miley Shimubukuro. I think uh, it's very real, important to focus on the issue at hand, which is the change to the requirements for granting a marriage license. That's what's at issue here. We are changing the definition of who can get a marriage license. There's been a lot of testimony about how that's going to change the nature of marriage. That would be up to the churches and to the believers, whether they feel it, it, that it changes their version or their definition of holy matrimony. We know that there are, as already been mentioned, there are um, faiths that already would love to be able to marry all of their congregants. And the way the law stands now, that is not possible. I am an attorney that focuses on estate planning so that I know in the Windsor case that was about estate tax and if a person had gotten married in Canada like the Windsors did and had come back to uh, Hawaii rather than to New York, they would have had to pay the $356,000 in federal estate tax even with the decision for the Defense of Marriage Act because the Defense of Marriage Act says it's up to the state's definition of marriage, and currently we do not allow marriage, we don't recognize same-sex marriages here. I'm done with that if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. I'll proceed. Hi, my name is Sue Felix, um, and uh, Vice Chair and Senators, I stand in opposition of this bill. Uh, Hawaii and Hawaii's Supreme Court and the United States Supreme Court have both declared that same-sex couples do not have a civil right to marry. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, rejecting Senate Bill 1 would not be a matter of unjust discrimination. Marriages between one man and one woman. The government rightly discriminates against sibling, sibling marriage, parent-child marriages. It has been the norm since antiquity, antiquity that um, opposite gender um, couples marry. Gender does matter. It is the norm. Um, sorry. Um, this bill promotes a new lifestyle that will be taught to our children as morally right. We do not want our children to be taught that homosexual behaviors are okay in marriage. We do not want them to be um, um, taught uh, against their parents' values, against their parents' authority, that this kind of marriage is okay. This bill, the very word liability, um, the very word liability tells us the um, demonstrates to us the coercive intent of this legislation. I ask you to vote no and to allow the people of Hawaii to vote on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, senators. Thank you for letting us be here. Um, the state attorney, attorney general this morning testified that the bill has been carefully, quote, carefully written to protect the rights of religious organizations. My understanding of our U.S. Constitution that it was written to protect our individual citizen rights, not necessarily organizations. 
Our First Amendment right is to protect the free exercise of religion of individual citizens, not organizations. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but around our nation, people are being forced to embrace homosexuality and same-sex marriage. Their free exercise of religion, living by their convictions, is being attacked. For instance, in August, in New Mexico, the Supreme Court ruled that this photographer, Elaine Huguenin, must choose between her convictions and operating her business. Uh, she said she could not take photographs of a same-sex commitment ceremony because of her convictions. Now she's being told she has to stop her business. In Oregon, the labor commissioner has said, he's told the press that the goal is to rehabilitate bakers, Aaron and Melissa Klein, who refused to do cakes for same-sex marriage weddings, citing their Christian faith. It's very dangerous when a government organization says it needs to rehabilitate citizens, that they even have the right and the responsibility to rehabilitate citizens of their own religious convictions. California is being, parents are being forced their schools are forced to um, have homosexual curriculum and they're not allowed to opt out. Recently, okay, I'm asking you to oppose this bill. It's going against the fiber of our constitution and we do not, it's going against the rights of citizens. We're being attacked as citizens and you need to address this. Okay. Please. Senator, Senator Gabbard has a question for you. Yes, thank you. Could you just send a copy of your testimony as well? What, what is your name again, please? Lisa Polis. Thank you, Lisa. And actually, I have copies of articles from the Huffington Post and from Citizen Magazine and a lot of different ones, it's conservative and liberal, that this is going on on our nation. Senators, you need to be aware. If you could and include the links, educate. that would be fine. Thank, Thank you. you. We need to Thank educate you, our citizenry. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. My name is Dan Gluck. I stand on my written testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Can I ask Dan a question? Can I ask Dan? Oh, Dan. Dan, are you still in? Can uh, I Senator ask you? Senator Ihara wants to open up another, uh, uh, a different can of worms <laughs> for you. Well, the, the one that the lady was trying to pry open, uh, could you articulate the, the, I guess it's the constitutional basis for um, prohibiting photography? Prohibiting the New Mexico photographer and the Oregon cake maker. They have a business, their own business, a cake baking business and a photography business, apparently. And uh, they um, are not allowed to follow their own convictions by discriminating in the marketplace. Could you explain, could you, do you have any background that you could um, provide that could speak to that uh, question? Sure. So... To my knowledge, there's not a single state in the country that allows private businesses to discriminate in the way that uh, you're suggesting here. Um, once a business decides to enter the marketplace, it has to play by the same rules as everyone else. And so we have our public accommodation statutes that have existed for decades. And in Hawaii, the public accommodation statute has said that it is unlawful for a private business to discriminate on the basis of race, sex, religion, disability, and since 2006, sexual orientation as well. Um, we don't want to have a situation in which private businesses are allowed to hang signs on their doors saying, you know, no, uh, no Jews allowed, no African Americans allowed, or no gays allowed. Um, that's not the law that it's been in Hawaii for the last six years. We shouldn't change that now. Is there a federal constitutional basis for prohibiting? Is it, is, I'm not sure if there's a commerce provision in the U.S. Constitution or, or in other states, uh, you know, besides statutory public accommodations law, is there, a, is there a constitutional basis that, because I believe the two cases must, I think at least the New Mexico case went to the New Mexico Supreme Court. So there must be a New Mexico state constitutional provision that prohibited that discrimination. You know, the public accommodations laws have been around so long, I actually don't know whether there's been a constitutional uh, basis for any of these decisions recently. Um, I do know that, you know, under the Commerce Clause, obviously, Congress has the authority to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, and obviously this legislature has the authority to pass uh, the public accommodations law, too. So you're saying that uh, the Commerce Clause authorized Congress to establish the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 
Is that right? And I, under that act, the, okay. uh, under the congressional action pursuant to the U.S. Constitutional Commerce provision, um, the Congress is authorized to establish standards for non-discrimination in the marketplace. Is, am I following you? I, I think that's right, Senator. I'm sorry. I'm, that, I, I'm sorry if I don't have uh, sort of a more specific answer for you, but there may be other constitutional bases for Congress's authority as well. Um, uh, there, there may be something under the Equal Protection Clause. If you middle. find anything, because I think we you know, should try to address the concerns being raised. Um, you know. <clears throat> Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Dan, we have uh, Senator Shimbu Kuro has a question for you. Sure. Hi. Um, I don't know if you've, you've been able to look at some of the conscience clauses that some other states have put into their marriage equality statutes, but um, I'm just wondering if any states have tried to accommodate these bus business owners, um, if there could be some way that maybe they could refer people to other bakeries or other photographers that are, you know, you know that do accept those ty kinds of clients or... I don't know. Has that been done elsewhere? My understanding is no, um, that you don't allow private businesses to discriminate. Again, once you're entering the marketplace, you are then making a conscious choice to say, I am open to the general public along the same lines as, um, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Once you are making the decision to enter the marketplace, you are consciously deciding that you will play by the same rules as everyone else. And Hawaii, again, for decades has had the, these rules wherein you cannot discriminate on these protected categories. And sexual orientation and gender Gender identity uh, were added in 2006. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Dan, isn't that at the heart of the uh, the complaint brought by two, uh, a lesbian couple against the uh, B and B that uh, discrimination in Hawaii Kai, the discrimination was based on sexual orientation and uh, not uh, you know the, the the unit was already rented. Sorry, I cannot rent to you, but rather because uh, the woman specifically said that she doesn't rent to lesbians and does not want two women in the same bed. That's, that's, that's the example that comes to mind and the only example where the courts found, well, the, the courts found on summary judgment for the, for the plaintiffs. Isn't that accurate? That's my understanding of the case, Chair. And regardless of what the legislature does with the marriage bill, that case will continue along the same lines. That's already the law. Right. And isn't that totally unrelated to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as, my un as I understand, that is totally unrelated because that's a basis of sexual orientation by a private actor as opposed to same-gender marriage. That's correct. Would you Chair. agree with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. We'll proceed. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like good, to good afternoon. Okay. Forgive me. This is the first time I've ever testified, so if I'm nervous, forgive me. We forgive you already. You forgive us too. We sure have. I am. My name is Beatrice Piliwali. This is my husband, George Piliwali. We have been married for 52 years, going on 53 this coming February. And I believe in the traditional marriage that God has put us under. I have to read this to you. I, the real threat of the homosexuality has been hidden under a mask of equal rights, constitutional rights, employment opportunities, home ownership, and adoption of the herd of sexual children by the homosexuals. <coughs> so that they can convert the homosexual population with the ultimate goal of the domination of the heterosexual world as a whole. This to me is, is that impossible? I do not count on that. I am willing to bet that those <coughs> in Sodom gave consideration to the same conclusions before they were enfolded into the deadly sin of homosexuality. I am totally against the homosexual marriage. We have been married for 53 years. I believe in the traditional marriage between man and woman. God set that up before anybody here was even born. 
And we need to take that into consideration. Otherwise, we will pay big time. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, well, she talks a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is her first time. First time. Anyway, I'm George P. Wally. I'm just going to go right to the meat. Homosexuals claim rain the rainbow as, <clears throat> as theirs, when actually it's a covenant between God and Noah, a heterosexual. Homosexuals changed their title to a perverted homosexual lifestyle. Bigot, a person who is utterly intolerant. Homosexuals are bigots for the evils of hom homosexuality. Heterosexuals are bigots also but in Jesus' name for righteousness. Tolerant, to have sympathy for. The word of God in the Bible forbids us from tolerating homosexuality because it is an abomination, period. And Jesus is now perjuring the church presently. Therefore, senators, legislators, your obligation is clear. Do not allow <coughs> the shameful unity of homosexuals, but stand on HB and SB 2312 relating to marriage enacted in 1994 that is still in force. I have shown you the moral threat homosexuals pose for us, our children and our grandchildren. I have proven homosexuals lied about the rainbow, being bigots and all that, all the things they accuse us of being. I have presented irrecoverable evidence that the homosexuals' view of equal rights is a sham, since homosexuals is really interested in the total domination of heterosexuals. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Is everybody praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Testing. Hello. Okay. Dear Honorable Chair He and members of the Committee on Judiciary and Labor, my name is Jansen and I oppose Senate Bill 1. I would like to start by saying something my pastor said. I love the gay community. Jesus died for them the same way he died for all of us. Hearing this reminded me of my years living back in the San Francisco Bay, the gay Jerusalem of the world. Living there and having been cultured to what being a gay man means in the 21st century, I should be ecstatic that our state is coming closer to same-sex marriage. However, with this preconceived euphoria is the awkward truth that many gays don't support same-sex marriage. You see, gays like me have been thrown into a new wave of conformity, and as a result, an ironic taboo has originated. For someone of my sexual orientation to be against gay marriage, makes it seem like I, I'm burning the gay flag my community fought for. But it is with a heart and love and compassion that I oppose SB1. An issue of this magnitude should not be decided with a special session. I agree. I share all this as a means of finally coming out of the closet, not as a gay man, but someone who understands his values. So therefore, why don't you let all of us decide together? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to start with group eight. And then uh, just a reminder, uh, as a matter of housekeeping, if you have cell phones, they should be on vibrate. And we appreciate that. And, and we also appreciate that uh, the orderly fashion, just a, a friendly reminder if we could uh, withhold applause or any other noise uh, distractions that would be helpful and I think in the best interest of the proceeding. So uh, if the young lady would proceed, we are prepared to accept your testimony at this time. Thank you. Thank you for hearing. I'm amazed at our system that I can speak. I believe the words, oh, I am opposed to SB1. I believe the words of Dr. Paul Popino, who's who studied and uh, devoted his career life to the study of genetics, family, and marriage. He said, a strong family life is indispensable, not merely to the culture, but actually to the survival of any people. In the, in the history of mankind, one nation after another has followed this pattern of degrading the family life and substituting other patterns for it. And they have disappeared. For the well-being of the community, for the very existence of the nation, one of the first questions asked about any proposed change in culture should be, will it strengthen the family? The established religion I am a part of made a worldwide declaration in 1995 stating, we, the first presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, solemnly proclaim that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God and that the family is central to the Creator's plan and for the eternal destiny of His children. 
The first commandment that, gave, that God gave to Adam and Eve pertained to their potential for parenthood as husband and wife. We further declare that God commanded, has commanded that the sacred powers of procreation are to be employed only between a man and a woman, lawfully wedded as husband and wife. Okay, so this is what I believe. This is what my established religion believes. But this marriage equality bill directly prohibits the free exercise to follow this belief, especially with the university that's here, that, uh, um, that our religion uh, that provides married student housing to. So that, uh, because we'll have to recognize all married couples, but our church does not recognize married Thank couples. you. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Hope Brainerd. I stand before you in the spirit of the office of Elijah. I received this oracle on the 8th of this month. And this is what the Lord has to say. The same-sex marriage has caused a controversy against my purpose for this land. I've divided already their cause for condemnation. The social media will expose, pray against the work of the enemy. Here, the heartfelt prayers must be my people's cry. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha Chair He and members of the committee. Aloha. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Jess Glasser, and I stand by my written testimony in strong support of SB1. I wanted to add three quick things. One, I'm a Jew, and I appreciate the religious freedom in the bill that honors the religious authority of local faith leaders to interpret their own religion's laws according to their own traditions and not those of outside religious groups. Two, I'm a social worker, and I am a graduate student at UH in social work. I am guided by a professional code of ethics that strengthens human relationships and families. Three, I am married to a deployed service member. The Department of Defense also recognizes that strong families are important. My husband earns privileges through his service to this nation that are extended to me as his spouse. So I get this card here that gives me access to housing and insurance and health care. It also allows me to drive on to base to drop him off before his submarine deploys and to pick him up when he arrives. And this is something that should be for all spouses, including same-sex spouses here in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aloha, Mr. Uh, Flayton He. Aloha. I am your constituent. I come from Laie, and I'm in... Uh, I strongly support, uh, excuse me, I strongly oppose the bill. I want to first say that I'm not against the people who uh, decided to live in a, in a same sex, sex union. And they have the freedom and they can choose to do that. But I also think that the gay community is trying to destroy families and destroy religion as it is. The leader of the gay community has said the one thing, the one, the bottom line is to destroy society as it is. I implore you to please vote against this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. After listening to so many testimonies since 1030, I'm going to digress from my written testimony. You have copies of that. Uh, I'm going to speak um, as a um, retired educator. I taught in the Kailo Kaneohe area schools for almost 40 years and uh, was an administrator and educational specialist with the department before I retired. When I um, was teaching in the elementary school back in the 1960s, um, I taught health and science to sixth graders, and it came to a point where um, there was a curriculum in sex education. I taught sex, sex education to sixth graders. Parents had 
the um, liberty to up their children out of sex education. I felt, as a Christian, I felt very comfortable with the curriculum. Recently, I was made aware of the curriculum that has been uh, implemented in certain states, and particularly in Ontario, Canada, um, where um, I, I was honestly very, very disturbed by the content, the visuals, the activities that were suggested in the curriculum. And I just pray that our teachers, school teachers, would not be forced to implement and teach that kind of curriculum um, once um, same-sex marriage becomes law in Hawaii. Um, I also want to um, respond to earlier um, the um, approval by some representative from HSTA. So I respectfully um, disagree with them that there will be no impact on our educational system. We will be impacted for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Clyde Wadsworth. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Alston Hunt, Floyd and Ng, and co-counsel with John D'Amato, representing the plaintiff. Can you put the mic closer to you, please? Sure. Uh, I'm an, an attorney with the law firm of Alston Hunt, Floyd and Ng, and co-counsel with John D'Amato, representing the plaintiff couples in the Jackson versus Abercrombie case that is currently on appeal. Today, I'm testifying in my personal capacity. I testify in strong support of SB1. My partner and I recently celebrated our 20th anniversary together. We look forward to the day when the state of Hawaii will treat our commitment and our ohana with equal dignity and respect. As an attorney, I believe the freedom to marry the person you love is a fundamental constitutional right. The Marriage Equality Bill remedies a basic inequality in our system that denies gay and lesbian families. And make no mistake about it, we are ohana in every way that matters. The dignity and respect that other married couples enjoy. And importantly, Federal benefits that are tied to the married couple's state of residence are not currently available, including many social security benefits. They're not available to same-sex couples that travel to other states to marry. The bottom line is that enacting SB1 is the only way to assure marriage equality for same-sex couples. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. My name is Greg Fritz. I'm from Elba Beach, and uh, I strongly oppose op uh, SB1. Uh, it's not so much about the homosexuality. If we put that aside, um, a lot of religion has been brought out today, a lot of feelings, emotions, um, and all of this is important. But the real issue is the democratic process and the people of Hawaii not being able to speak on this issue. We thought we voted back in 1998. Um, apparently, there were loopholes, as mentioned earlier. Um, the biggest opposition I have, one of the biggest, to SB1 is Section 11 that states that the Department of Health can take whatever measures they deem fit to support this measure. Um, this is basically saying that tax dollars will be used however the Department of Health sees fit to educate our children. And again, the opt-out option um, hasn't been written in or anything like that. So uh, there is concern that the, the dollars that we put in to state coffers will be used to further an agenda that may not be voted on or supported. Thank you. Okay. Uh, questions, members? Um, I just want to be clear with what you're saying. Section 11 of the bill refers to the Department of Health. You agree? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you, uh, do you understand that the Department of Health is not involved uh, directly with the Department of Education? Directly. With yes, you? Okay. And let me say then that as one of the uh, individuals that had a hand in crafting the bill that and, and I'm happy to put it in the committee report because you may, you may be pointing to an area that needs to be um, uh, enunciated. And that is that that section pertains to the Department of Health um, bringing up to speed should the bill become law what is necessary with respect to licensing. Okay, sir. Okay, so I, I, I want to thank you for pointing that out. That 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 completely that, uh, in my opinion, is an assumption that should maybe should not have been made. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. You need to make the clarification yeah, in the committee report, section eleven. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Anne Fritz, and um, I born and raised in Hawaii, and also live in Ever Beach. Um, 
Thank you for allowing me to submit my testimony to speak before you today. And um, I am in opposition of SB1. And um, I'd like to apologize if my stance, you know, offends any friends or family who have chosen that um, lifestyle or relationships. But I just feel that um, I hope you um, vote against it or, or let us vote on this issue because it has um, probably farther reaching effects that we all realized. And I appreciate the fact that you um, tried to write in there uh, to protect my religious rights, but I still feel that um, maybe more can be done um, in that area because um, I, I, sorry, very nervous. <sighs> Um, because, you know, my, I personally believe in marriages between one man and one woman and that our church, it would prevent our church from myself personally and my church from being a viable part of our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairman He, Senators of the committee. My name is Kurt Kamikawa. And... I'm a statehood baby. I, um, I appreciate the opportunity to testify. I used to actually persecute Christians, but my views have evolved to live by the word of God, and I stand in opposition to SB1 today. I've been educated locally and have been processing through a lot of the testimony. I want to bring you back to the initial opening statements of the Attorney General who stated about his ironclad review of this bill, and yet when questioned by, by you, uh, could not really adequately answer regarding federal benefits being available. Um, you yourself called this perhaps more a question of equity versus equality. And really what is not on trial today is aloha, equality, and instead the institution of marriage, the institution of family, and whether religious freedom will continue to exist as it has. Thank you very much for this opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Good Chair afternoon. He and other members. My name is Noelle Anance. I oppose SB1 and implore you to please respect and defend the democratic process and allow a constitutional amendment which would better address same-sex marriage and allow for public input. As a mom who is quite involved in my daughter's school, excuse me, I'm very concerned about how it would affect the school policy if this becomes the law of the land. At present, we parents still have the right to opt our children out if we have for, if we feel certain topics might be too sensitive and not be fairly taught, which we were able to do. If this passes, I believe the parents' right might be restricted and we won't, be have, we won't have that right because it'll come across as being dis um, discriminating against that lifestyle. So uh, in closing, I would just like to say, if it is true that the attitudes have changed towards same-sex marriage, then please allow the people to vote on this cru crucial issue that will have a tremendous impact and ramification that has not been thoroughly thought out on our beloved Aina and its almost 1.4 million residents. I believe all of you have been allowed to be in your position for such a time as this to uphold our state's motto, the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. In closing, as a reminder, our government is of the people, by the people, for the people. Thank, thank you, and allow me to testify. May I ask you a question, please? Yes. Uh, you, have, uh, you have repeated what has been said with other parents with, the, uh, uh, with respect to their concern about the Department of Education. Okay. Uh, you have used a phrase that has been, uh, you've repeated a phrase that's been used frequently uh, today, and that's opt out. Mm -hmm. uh, may I ask you specifically what you mean uh, uh, well, let me ask you this. D do you agree with me that the bill before us, Senate Bill 1, d is, does not uh, comment or direct or um, compel the Department of Education in any way? It's totally unrelated. Do you agree with that, or do you have a different uh, view, having read Senate Bill 1? 
I'm not sure, Senator. What, okay. what I don't understand, what, what my concern is, if, if this becomes the law of the land, I think that supersedes the BOE. And opting out, and I'll just say this, the public school system, they were very accommodating when, when I decided to opt my daughters out. I, I allow them to stay in for certain things, but certain things I asked them to opt out, and they were very accommodating. That's what I'm afraid of that's going to happen if it becomes the law of the land that the parents, as some others have testified, they will not be allowed to be um, to give out notices ahead of time because it will be considered discriminating. So it's a fear on your part as opposed to uh, uh, something that is related to the bill before us is the way I'm hearing it that you're fearful that uh, if the bill were to become law that the your your privilege or prerogative to opt out may, may be usurped Correct. by the okay. by the Department of Education and Correct. so uh, I'm not sure how to respond to a prospective fear that may or may not exist but um, I'm, I'm trying to uh, um, compose in my mind how the committee report may reflect these concerns raised by parents whose children are in the Department of Education and that it is not the intent of this bill um, uh, to, to uh, restrict that prerogative that you evidently indicate exists. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to, uh, I will try to fashion some comment and I wanted to clarify with you what uh, that opting out was. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Chair Senator He, Vice Chair Shimmer Curl, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I'm Stephen Melendrez. I am a small business owner. I'm a technologist and been happily married for 36 years. And I just want to share with you what we're hearing on the street from the other businesses. The big question is, what are we doing? The whole premise, if you look at, as you know, the bill, the beginning of the bill, is that civil unions are not recognized by federal law. So why are we not taking this back to the federal and just having the Obama administration write a short executive order saying, we're going to go ahead and recognize civil unions. Then the benefits would be reciprocal to be done. The other side of it that we've heard quite a bit is um, just a civil rights issue. Many of us in this room are minority. You know, I remember when Dr. King marched in the Freedom March, and uh, I saw that back in the, in the 60s. I'm dating myself now. Civil rights is something which is, you can't change. But gay marriage, is, it's relational. It's a decision. It's a decision to do this or that. It's not irrevocable. Civil rights is usually on an irrevocable chain. So I believe for your consideration that in order to make informed decisions that you would consider having a study done which would Im would study which would um, give you the information the matrices that you'd require in order to make informed decisions concerning the financial the cultural and educational impact to the state of hawaii if this bill went through thank you thank you very much Good evening. Uh, Hi. I think it's evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, group number nine, please uh, proceed uh, to prepare yourself for toward the back of the auditorium. Please proceed. All right. Good evening, Chair He, Vice Chair Shimo Bukuro, Member Senate Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, I just, my name is Vivina Sam, and I come from the Eva Beach area. Um, first of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude to all of our leg legislators. Thank you for your willingness to represent the voice of your constituents and for facing all the challenges that comes with being in such a critical decision-making position. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm here today to express my strong opposition to SB1. I believe that the passage of this bill will have irreversible negative consequences that will impact this and future generations. I do not claim to be a prophet and able to predict the future, however, the truth is that same-sex marriage 
goes against the very principles that built our nation, and that is the Holy Bible. There's not enough time to quote scripture or to give evidence of how other states were adversely affected by the passage of this bill. However, I ask that you would allow the people of Hawaii to live out our state motto and let the life of our land be perpetuated in righteousness. We the people have chosen you to be our voice and we cry out today, let the people decide. Our votes are from our hearts and are not pressured by any special interest groups. We know who our leaders are and what votes will be cast. We are letting our voice be heard now and rest assured our voices will be heard in future elections. I stand here today and humbly ask our leaders to please let Thank the people you. decide. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to hear my testimony. And I pray that the wisdom from our most high God will overflow to each and every one of you and that blessings will fall upon you and your families. Thank you. Talofa and good evening. My name is Ba'a Aitavale, all the way from Pearl City. On behalf of my family, uh, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ that couldn't be here today, I stand for them and I also speak for them. I stand before you all today because I strongly oppose SB1. Um, it's been a long day, so I'm just gonna get to the point. Um, I understand this is about equality, senators and legislators. If this is about equality, then let the people vote. Let us decide. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sarah Manu, and I strongly oppose SB1. Um, I stand before you not only as a mother of three and a wife to a husband. Uh, I stand before you as a God-fearing woman. And um, I could sco quote scripture to you, but um, I just want to say and ask and pray that just as my God is a just God and a sovereign and a mighty God, I ask that um, you leave it to the people to decide. And um, I pray nothing but blessings. God bless. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chair He. Good evening. Vice Chair. Uh, good evening, Vice Chair Shima Bukuro and members of the Judiciary and Labor Committee. Uh, I am Faith Strecker, resident and voter in the Waipahu District of Oahu, and I am in strong opposition to SB1 relating to equal rights. Marriage is not a civil right, and no court, including the Supreme Court, has ever said that it is. A constitutional amendment would be better to address same-sex marriage and allow for ample public input. SB1 is in violation of the First Amendment rights and does not allow me to freely express my thoughts, beliefs, and practice whatever religion I wish. Also, special session is not allowing proper vetting and discussion of this bill. Special session is circumventing democracy rather than promoting democracy. Same-sex marriage should not be passed in a special session because a five-day special session is not enough time to discuss the most controversial issue of our time. A yes vote during special session is a no vote to democracy because the voice of the people is not heard in a five-day special session. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for all that you do. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Dawn Stecker, and I am seven years old, and I go to a Christian school, Christian Academy. Why would one man and one man and one woman and one woman if you cannot even have a child. And why would a child want to be in a house with one man and one man and one woman and one woman? That is not marriage. Thank you for all 
you do Voices of Akiki. Aloha, I'm uh, Eldin Kukahiko. I'm pastor of Hope Chapel Kahalu. Uh, I want to first thank Senator He and Senator Gabbard. Uh, you are the only two senators that responded to my email, and I thank you very much. I really appreciate your caring heart. Um, I'm opposed to SB1, and uh, I agree with the, the, with the sharpness of the, the procedure. Uh, I have some other things that uh, haven't been talked about here that I'd like to uh, include. I have, a, uh, I have petitions from 600 people in my community that is against this um, um, bill. And um, I, can, I can give it to you, Senator. Um, but this is what the people on the street is indicating to me. I organize a sign waving campaign in my district simply and peacefully saying to let the people vote for the last two days. I can say 95% horns blowing, thumbs up, and 5% thumbs down, and sad to say, middle finger up. <laughs> By just a few, we have been aggressively confronted, harassed, photographed, called names. They stole our sign in broad daylight, and with confrontation that followed that caused minor injuries to three people. Police were involved. We are not the aggressors. We want the people to have the right and chance to vote. I say, let us, all of us, homosexuals and straight people, stand together on both sides and say, let us vote. No more confrontations. Just let us vote, because that is what the ballot box is for. Let the people decide. Thank you. God bless you. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Wolfersberg. I appreciate the opportunity to testify today. Um, I um, just right up front, I just want to state that I'm opposed to the bill. Um, and I agree with the person that just was at the podium and everybody else that has said this. I believe that this vote needs to be delayed. The special session is not the right place to do this. I don't know if you've been, kept, been keeping a tally of the people that have been coming to the stand, but I have. And it's interesting that about 70% of the people who've come to the stand have expressed opposition to this bill which is about equal to the people that expressed, um, who passed the bill in 1998 with the constitutional amendment. It's also interesting to me, in, interesting to me that that amendment was passed um, with the legislature involved in the decision, but it wasn't passed with the governor involved. And I'm not sure why the governor is involved in this special session right here. This is his session. This is not the people's session. So your, your decision on this bill determines whether or not you are the voice of the people or you are the voice of the governor. I encourage you to be the voice of the people. Wait till he comes back. Another point I wanted to make, um, I agree with all the points that have been made on religious freedom. <clears throat> um, I won't go over those, but another point that I haven't heard, which is, um, is an issue for religious freedom, has to do with um, re organizations facilities. Um, that is a source of revenue for religions. And if you restrict that source of revenue, you are also restricting the, um, the operations that they can pursue, and you are putting a restriction on the religions. So taxing them and forcing them into a position of, of deciding whether or not they'll be able to perform marriages or not based on that source of revenue is not the right direction. Another point I wanted to make, which I haven't heard, which has to go with um, not understanding is, sorry, just really quickly, immigration and the birth rate, our birth rate's declining. Um, every, people have said that homosexual relationships cannot reproduce. The one thing that's keeping the United States afloat and their economy is immigration. Our birth rate is declining. And this move would also help to decline our birth rate. So I don't believe we've considered all the issues yet. This needs to be done in a regular legislative session. Thank you. Senator He and distinguished senators assembled today, thank you for your time. 
Aloha. My name is Kenny Jackson, and I want to raise an issue that I haven't heard discussed yet. I haven't heard every single testimony, but it has to do with the long-term impact on children. We don't have enough studies um, that have been done to give us an idea of what the long-term impact on children would be if we were to pass um, SB1 here in Hawaii. I'm in opposition to passing this. I believe, as many of the other testimonies have given, that, that we need to allow the people to make this decision. But there was a study done in Norway and Sweden that demonstrated that 50% of homosexual couples' relationships ended in divorce and 167% of lesbian couples' relationships ended in divorce. The question is, what impact does that have on children? That's the question. And I believe that we need more time. This session needs to um, be ended and needs to be decided by the people. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair He and members of the committee. My name is Sharon Nagasako, and I thank you for this opportunity to testify. I am opposed to SB1 for a number of reasons. The first and foremost being that Almighty God, the creator of our universe, also created the institution of marriage to be the union between a man and a woman. Since none of us here today is God, who are we to change his definition of marriage? And yet, sadly, there are some who are battling to do just that. During the past several weeks, Hawaii's legislators have been inundated with facts, figures, and statistics from both sides of the marriage issue. You have probably heard it all, so I won't add to your information overload. I would just like to tell you that while I was gathering petition signatures to oppose both same-sex marriage and the special session, while most people were opposed to this special rights bill, Everyone I spoke with was infuriated that this special session was being convened. Comments from, why don't the legislators just wait until January to take up this bill, things like that, or that we already have a constitutional amendment on the book. So on behalf of those people who are there throughout our islands who signed the petitions, I ask that you listen to your constituents and vote no on SB1. But even better, be a good steward of the trust the voters have put in you, as well as those hard-earned taxpayers' dollars, um, as one day you will be just constituents like we are. Would you like to be treated the way you are treating us? Thank you very much. Okay. Can you take over? Okay. Okay, please proceed. Thank you. My name is Greg Rule, spelled R-E-U-E-L, and I appreciate being here. I appreciate the order that you've placed into today. I came early, got a number nine that gets you on at five o'clock. Nonetheless, you had order in what was going through, and there has not been chaos. I commend you for that. In the same respect, marriage has order. To change order brings consequences. I feel that you have a very delicate balance that you're trying to work with, and that is the pursuit of happiness, civil liberties, and joy versus natural law. You have the right and liberty to jump off a cliff, but natural law will have consequences with it. I believe the change of marriage as it is instituted between a man and a woman brings consequences with us. My name is spelt Rule, R-E-U-E-L. I bring that up because... That's the name of the father-in-law of Moses. In the Bible dictionary, there's a definition for our name. It's friend of God. I ask you very, very politely, please don't change the definition of marriage of my good friend. That the center point of his plan of happiness is marriage between a man and a woman. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Senators. Hello. Uh, I'd just like to thank you today for the opportunity to testify. Uh, my name is James Louis. Um, I'm born and raised in Honolulu. And uh, I'm, op I'm in opposition to SB1 for three reasons. Um, first of all, I do not believe that the special session is adequate enough time to address all the issues that SB1 will affect. It also kills the American democratic spirit just to give the people a true voice or a chance to decide on marriage. 
Number two, the religious protection stated in Section 572 of SB1 in combination with the Public Accommodations Clause of 489-2 does not adequately protect the First Amendment religious freedoms of all churches, clergy, and members statewide. Third of all, this bill will not affect just same sex, just the same-sex community or just churches. It will affect all of Hawaii, including our educational system, our community service organizations, and the future of all families in our islands. I strongly urge you to allow the people to vote and to decide on marriage. Mahalo. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. I'm, I'm Barbara O'Neill, and I oppose SB1 on the same reasons a lot of people have already stated that it's not going through the um, normal process the bill should go through. Um, but also, I wanted to talk about Senator He asked a pastor in Group 1 Can this you morning. speak to the mic, please? Oh, am I not? I think, yeah, it's better. Okay, is that better? Is my time start over? <laughs> um, <laughs> Senator, he asked a pastor in Group 1 this morning how this bill infringes on the First Amendment. And I am a voter in Kapolei, and Senator Gabbard is my senator. And he was censored in 2009, and I guess my time didn't start over, for violating the Democrat Party of Hawaii platform on equal rights. His freedom of speech to represent his constituents was censored and trumped by the Equal Rights Clause. This bill addresses protection of clergy and buildings, but not individual conscience and living out religious beliefs. So I'm pretty sure that my First Amendment right on this topic will always be trumped by the Equal Protection Clause. Um, um, even though homosexuality was dropped from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, there are many other paraphilias listed. And I'm concerned about marriage equality and what that actually How's the B in LGBT going to be handled when, when that comes up? Um, I wish I had more time to talk about the changes historically that have happened to the DSM and the activism that the PD Felix are now doing in succeeding in changing the DSM-5 this year. Thank you. Thank you. To our state senators and the committee, my name is Richard Long, and I've been a resident in Hawaii for over 20 years. I strongly urge the Senate not to approve the Hawaii Marriage Equality Act of 2013 and to respect our sacred democratic process. For such an important and sensitive topic as this, has our elected officials reached out or engaged its voters on this topic? Per our state's preamble, has our legislators sought for divine guidance for this major issue. Our model declares the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. If we do what's morally right, then we will continue to have life and peace in our state. You are our elected officials, and we as citizens rely on you for proper representation. John C. Maxwell, a well-known leadership author, penned to paper stating, everything rises and falls on the decisions and actions of our leadership. If this act is passed, as our leaders, are you prepared for, the, for its consequences? If my Christian beliefs teaches me that same-sex marriage is wrong and expressed in a loving and peaceful manner, will my state protect me from opposition? Churches should not be given ultimatums or stipulations on the solemnization of marriage by our government. I urge our lawmakers to look at the outcomes of same-sex marriage in other states. Will this act give equality to all, all of its citizens? I urge you again not to approve the Hawaii Marriage Equality Act of 2013. Thank you for your audience. Thank you. I'm not that tall. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> I'm Roberto Sebastian Leon. I am from California originally, but I am a registered voter here. Been here for two years now. Um, so take my word or not, but I believe that with this, we don't have enough information to go forward. I'm opposed to this bill. There's so many ramifications that could come through when we talk, when we're talking about education and health and all these different things. It's not this bill, but it is what this bill will bring. This bill sets a precedent for other things. 
Also, I am for respect. Everybody needs res respect. Nobody should be discriminated against. God loves everyone, sinner and saint and anybody in between. And I know that if we do things too fast, it won't go the way it should. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here, Honorable Senators. My name is David Amin, and I am a senior pastor over at Kukui Lani Baptist Church in Milani Tech Park. And uh, my wife also was a former DOE teacher, so we understand about the educational system here. We appreciate being able to be here, and much of the former um, testimonies, the one thing that I wanted to talk about was with children and with free speech, Senator, he said that, well, some of these are not really connected to the bill, but we have this thing that the, this man just said before me called precedent. And if we look at what happens in certain states and, of course, in Canada and in some Scandinavian countries, there are some places where the Bible itself is deemed as hate speech. And so, therefore, the concern is the precedent that will be set with this bill. And maybe, as Senator he said earlier, he didn't know how to respond to the one lady about her fear of something in the future. Perhaps you could put some other exemptions in there with regard to that free speech. I don't think it would fly with perhaps some of the LGBT groups. I have no hatred or animosity of them, and I never preach any of that. But I'm just saying that that is the valid concern about the precedent that is set for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, honorable committee members. Uh, my name is Zhen, and uh, my wife and I born, grew up in China, and we are citizens in this country now. We love this country because of the, the democracy and the freedom of religion. Um, my wife submitted a written testimony. Here is her concluding. Rush same-sex marriage bill in such a short special, special session is a poor example of democracy. Therefore, I plead to you that the people vote on such a critical, important issue. We are raising two younger uh, young daughters. We teach them Bible. Same-sex marriage is against um, biblical value. Um, our family opposes it, our church opposes it, our Chinese community opposes it. We humbly ask, please let the people vote. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, committee members. Um, I'd like to ask two questions first, please, before I give my testimony. Number one, I've been waiting a long time outside to give my testimony, and I would appreciate the fact if the chairman was sitting there so I could give him my testimony. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth like he's already made up his decision before I give him my testimony. Second question is, would it be all right for me to recuse myself and wait until the chair returns to give my testimony and not lose my place in line? Because I've been waiting for a long time. Oh, no, I mean, that... go back. please, I ask you. I mean, if I, if I don't wait this long for give my testimony, I humbly ask that the chairman is sitting there when I give it. That's mutual respect. Okay. Well, I'm the vice chair. Yeah, I'm the I'm the vice chair of the committee, and I'm authorized to take testimony. So, yeah, he. I mean, it's it's hard for him to be here for the entire. It's such a long thing. He's he's probably listening on the intercom anyway. Mm -hmm. But you you understand my point, though. I've been waiting a long time. Would it be all right, ma'am, then if I sit and recuse myself no. and not lose my place in line, and when he comes yeah. back, give my testimony, or is that not allowed? I I don't believe that's allowed. I, yeah, no. yeah, I mean, other people didn't get that either, so. I, I understand, but I, I believe I'm the first person that brought that to light, that I wanted him up there when I gave my testimony. Did you submit written testimony? Yes, I did. Okay. I mean, so, we, so we're in receipt of your testimony. So, so the, no, the answer is no. The answer is no? Yeah, unfortunately, just in the interest of, we just don't have the time to do that. All right, I'll just give you my testimony. Yeah. All right, committee members, um, my name is Ronald Nipps. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to give my testimony. Um, I'm providing testimony in strong opposition to Senate Bill 1. 
I feel that this legislation needs to be voted on as an amendment to the Constitution of the State of Hawaii if a decision of this magnitude, which will directly and indirectly affect so many of our citizens and the future generations to come, is not placed on the ballot for an amendment, it will be a slap in the face for democracy. A vote was held on similar legislation in 1998, and I strongly urge you to consider the same course of action. Both sides have an argument for their views. Both sides have provided testimony here today. Regardless of what is required at the minimum to pass this legislation through this special session, I ask that you do the right thing, move to suspend Senate Bill 1, and introduce the necessary legislation for a vote by the people to make an amendment to the state constitution. The results of that vote should be the determining factor. Once the vote is completed, a clear vision of where the majority of the voters stand on this issue will be provided. That would be the correct time to move this bill forward if it is warranted, not now. Thank you. And what was your name again? My name is Ronald Nip, and I with two Ps. Ronald Nip. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Honorable proceed. committee members, my name is Alan Yamashiro, and ask that you vote no on Senate Bill One during the special session. Many would have us believe that supporting this socio-economic experiment through a craftily worded administrative change in the law has benefits that outweigh the sociological impact of same-sex marriage. According to recent State of Hawaii Department of Health statistics, there were 916 civil unions consummated since they have been available, compared to 32,513 marriages between a man and a woman during that same period. Why are you considering a bill in special session to adjust 3% of state licensed unions? If you pass this bill, you are forcing your constituents to be a part of this socioeconomic experiment. There are 14 other states and a few countries who have decided to try this irreversible experiment. It is irreversible because like civil unions, once you grant someone legal privileges, you can't take those privileges away. What has the experience of these other states and countries been? Massachusetts was the first state to enact same-sex marriage. What are the consequences, both intended and unintended in that state? In Massachusetts, all public schools, libraries are required to expand their bookshelves with books to normalize the LGBT partner behavior and lifestyle. Canada acknowledged same-sex marriage beginning in 2003. Besides Canadian schools teaching that there are now six genders, what were the intended unintended consequences? I urge you to vote no on this bill in this special session to allow these questions to be vetted by a more by a broader base of your constituents and understand the long-term effects of this bill. Same-sex marriage has not been in place anywhere long enough to assess the generational impact on our children, families, and society. Please consider, what is the legacy you want to leave as a legislator? Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. I'm grateful for the opportunity to stand before you. Uh, my name is Arthur Hanneman. I am a father of seven, a grandfather of 14, and a community member. I believe, as do thousands, that a life-changing decision of this magnitude should not, should not be rushed through. I believe, as do thousands, that we should let the people decide, as they did before. Okay, okay. Thursday night, a few nights ago at 7 p.m., 100 people got together with the objective to generate 1,000 letters in opposition to SB1. At 1 a.m. this morning, I received 2,500 letters, 1,600 letters specifically in opposition to the bill were directly addressed to Senator He. They were brought to his office this morning at 8.30. Again, I believe as do thousands, let the people decide. In closing, I believe in God. I believe God created man, woman, and family. Because of this belief, I have been accused of hating or having no love or compassion for those who support SB1. Let me say this. For those like me who oppose SB1, this is not about love and compassion. This is about right and wrong. Last, realize the people in this room and who are outside, like me, are registered voters and we live in your districts. And we will not forget, November 4th, 2014. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Lebrun, and I live in Waikiki. I have been here, just as you have, for many hours. And I am, I am very upset right now that there are literally more clerks here than our representatives, our senators. I say that with respect. My husband and I have lived overseas for over 20 years. And this is the first time in my married life that I have been back in the United States. People have died for us to have the right to have these freedoms. I lived in Germany in the very area where the epicenter of Nazism was founded and thrived. History shows us the horrors that occurred because of a very small minority that was given too much power because the majority either remained silent or were silenced. I want to say, I want to divert from my written testimony and say, the people of Hawaii will not be silent on this issue. If it becomes law, we will not be silent. Amen. Oh, and sorry, before you start, um, people in group 10 can start to um, approach the rostrum. Aloha, honorable vice chair and committee. My name is Liz Larson, and I'm a citizen of Honolulu. I am opposed to SB1 because in its current form, it infringes upon our religious liberties. The religious exemption in this bill is very, very weak. How the term public accommodation is used in this bill will leave the door wide open for litigation against churches, small businesses, and citizens in Hawaii. You must vote no to this bill. We must look at these important issues in detail during a regular session so that the people can understand the ramifications of the bill. The major problem in this country is that, and in this state is that both our federal and state governments are so set on controlling everything in our lives, including marriage, that we must fight against one another. Neighbors fighting against neighbor because we believe differently from one another. This is America. This should not happen. We should be the land of the free. Our schools are not free. Our businesses are not free and we are not free. We need to protect the sovereignty of Hawaii. It is a unique state and can stay that way. We do not have to allow same-sex couples to marry in Hawaii to be able to live in harmony with one another. The Honorable Clayton, he mentioned the Loving versus Virginia case in 1967. Then the government was dictating that interracial marriage should be allowed. Why did we not ask the question then? Why is the government involved in marriage at all? Where is a, is a marriage is a religious and personal issue. This country has gone astray because instead of questioning the government's motives, we are questioning each other's motives. This bill does not increase our liberties, but decreases them and should be rewritten to protect all of us, not just one group of people, at the detriment of our liberties and rights of conscience. Oh. Thank you. Uh, sir, could, what's your name, please? Liz Larson. Okay, thank you. Hello, my um, honorable chair, vice chair and committee. My name is Janelle Yim of Honolulu and I oppose SB1. I keep hearing those that support SB1 are making an issue of equal rights and, and, and tolerance. However, I'd like to ask you to seriously, seriously examine what I am about to share with you. While working on my master's of social work degree at the University of Hawaii, a colleague and I decided to do a qualitative research on the transgender population. Note, my colleague is a lesbian and is a dear friend of mine today. Our primary purpose of this research was to find what kinds of oppressions the TGs faced. However, due to the lack of support with the female to male population, our study was based on the male to female transgender population. To our surprise, our findings showed something quite disturbing. Here is what we discovered. 
All of those who were interviewed passionately expressed that they have been discriminated the most against by gay men than any other population, including heterosexuals, women, and straight men. They continued expressing how some of these gay men would at times let them know that they were a disgrace to the male gender. They also stated that they were treated with malice, cruelty, hatred, embarrassment, and shame. What is interesting about this finding is the fact that these gay men have also felt and experienced the harming effects of intolerance. Yet they are now displacing this same type of inhumane behavior on this transgender population. You would think there would be some empathy and tolerance to what these gay men have experienced. Okay. And almost, I'm almost done. Okay. Bear with me. Please summarize. Dallin H. Oaks, a former state Supreme Court judge, stated, the prospect of same-sex marriage has already spawned legal collisions with their free, the rights of free speech and of action based on religious beliefs. For example, advocates and government officials in certain states already are challenging the long-held belief right of religious adoption agencies to follow their religious beliefs and only place children in homes with both a mother and a father. As a result, Catholic Charities in Boston has stopped offering adoption services. Other advocates of same-sex marriage also suggesting ta that tax exemptions and benefits be withdrawn from any religious organization that does not embrace same-sex unions. Okay, thank you. Can we get your name, please? My name is Janelle. Now, is this about equal Janelle. rights and tolerance? Think about it. Janelle Lau? Janelle Yim. Janelle Yim. Okay, thank you. Okay, one, one announcement before we continue. Um, uh, we're, we, have, I, uh, we have a few more people in group nine and then group 10 is, is ready uh, to follow group nine. Now, bef between group nine and group 10, um, we'll, we'll have to take a 20 minute recess uh, I need the time to confer with the committee members. So we'll, we'll proceed with group nine. Um, group 10, uh, we'll, we'll take a 20 minute recess before uh, engaging in group 10. We have seven more groups uh, to go following group 10 and it's 530. So uh, would you please proceed? Thank you, Honorable Chair Clayton He, Honorable Vice Chair Shimabukuro and the rest of the legislature. My name is Elavila Giles. I've been a resident. I'm a first uh, generation immigrant to this country. I love this country very much. At least I did love it. I'm beginning to wonder about the, our country. But um, the reason that I'm here is to strongly oppose um, SB1. Uh, the reasons, I have many, many reasons, but one of them is primarily the, its intent to redefine the most core institution of society and marriage. The sacred nature of marriage is closely linked to the power of procreation. Only a man and a woman together have the natural bio, biological capacity to conceive children. The power of procreation to create life and bring God's children into the world is sacred and precious. Misuse of this power undermines the institution of the family and thereby weakens the social fabric. Strong families serve as a fundamental institution for transmitting the future generations the moral strength, traditions, and the values that sustain civilization. Uh, I just want to uh, give an example of something that worries me greatly because I have children, grandchildren. A lesbian who teaches eighth grade sex education in Massachusetts told NPR that she teaches her children how lesbians use sex toy to have intercourse. If anyone objects, she says, give me a break, it's legal now. One father was jailed after protesting because his son, a kindergarten student, was given a book about same-sex couples. I urge you strongly to please vote against SB1 and let the people decide this very critical issue that affects not just our lives, but the lives of our and our grandchildren. Thank you for letting me testify. Thank you. I'm as mad as you know what and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Jesus would not approve of this fanaticism. 
what I'm seeing and hearing is a lot of Pharisees. Sorry. My name is Distinguished Legislators. My name is Tim Earhart. I'm a member of Dignity Honolulu and the Gay Men's Chorus of Honolulu. One of our members, Eddie, gave me permission to tell his story. He met his partner when both were 14. They joined the army together and were stationed in the mainland. Together they had a son by surrogacy. When their son was a few years old, they were sent to Afghanistan. Eddie's mom took the boy to care for. They were not married, and this was before the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and DOMA was declared unconstitutional. A year and a half ago, our course member's partner was killed by an improvised explosive device, an IED. Ed's commander sent him home to, mourn, uh, to properly mourn, and he shared his post-traumatic stress disorder with other members of the chorus. After our last concert, he was sent back to Afghanistan. He emailed us saying, for those I love and care about, I will sacrifice. A few, a few weeks later, he was shot in the chest and medevaced to Germany to be boat, uh, operated on. He, he pulled through. In Hawaii, there are 45,000 active military and 14,000 retired military. Many gay and lesbians who want to marry, uh, want to marry their, their same gender. Will they have to travel to California to marry? If they are willing to die for their country, why count, can't they marry who they want to? And I challenge you legislators to, for those you love and care about, about sacrifice and vote yes on this bill. Thank you. Um, because there are only three of our senators here, our next uh, um, testimony um, asks a question regarding the um, members who are here. Um, you have less than a quorum. Is this a valid hearing at this point? Yes, it's, we only need a quorum when, it, when we vote. So you don't, you don't need a quorum of the, um, of the people to listen to the testimony, is no. that correct? Yes, that is Will you um, put that in the record, please, for about the last half an hour? The senators have come and gone and you've not maintained a quorum. I'd like to ask that that be put in your record. Okay, you can put it into your testimony. So now I'd like to begin my testimony. I'd like to thank Senator, Senator Solomon for being here. My name is David Ross. I'm from the Big Island in Kona, and I appreciate that one of our Big Island senators is here. I come to you in two capacities. One is a grandfather, and one is a member of a small minority I'd like to talk to you about. As grandfather, my, <clears throat> I'm here looking at my, my granddaughter, Allison, who's going to be two years old on Friday. Five years from now, she'll be seven years old. About 30 years, she'll be 32 years old. When she's seven years old, and if we see what happened in Ontario go on here, what we'll see is that the, the education system, the Gay Lesbian Education Network, Gelson, will have changed the, the, uh, the, uh, the education so that there's uh, elementary school training about gender fluidity. Gender fluidity means your gender is not determined by your, your, um, your genitalia. It's, it's a choice that you can make. And in Canada, as you heard earlier today from Phil Lease, they had um, elementary school where a parent was made aware of this and concerned about it and came and, and talked to the teacher to find out what was going on, but she was not allowed to find out any further because there was confidentiality agreement. So a seven-year-old was being counseled about gender fluidity and the parent was not allowed to hear about it. She complained to the principal. The principal repeated the, princi the uh, idea that he, couldn't, that, it, that he couldn't do it. And um, she said, well, I'm not going anywhere. So they called the police and she went to jail. Now, I want to talk about equal rights. The equal sign has two-way street. There's compassion on both sides. People can do what they want. You, en you enforce this law. And if you, don't, if you don't agree with the other side, you can go to jail as a parent. That's going to happen to my daughter-in-law in five years. It's going to happen to my granddaughter in 20 years when she gets married. The other minority is as a person who believes in sexual purity before marriage. A very small group probably in the Hawaii, but that's a, that's a, that's a minority group. And when you come with your educators and take my seven-year-old granddaughter and infuse the teaching that is currently being proposed, you're, you're committing intellectual rape of my granddaughter. Thank you. Um, before I start, uh, is it possible to have our other senators come in, and uh, particularly our chairman? Because he came in and no one told him that, the, um, that those who are here, testimony providers, requested that the chairman be here. We are grateful that you're here, um, Vice President. Uh, but um, 
No one told him that we wanted him to be here along with, uh, now we own, we're down to three. Is it possible to request that they come in? Okay, we can communicate that to him. Oh, pardon me, I didn't hear you. What? But if it's up to you, if you, want, if you don't want to testify, you don't have to. We want to, but we, we think it's important enough. We've taken the time to come here, uh, and we took a break, and um, we're here, and it, this is such an important issue that um, we could have at least told the chairman that um, we w want him to be present. It's been said that the, the committee members have already made up their mind, and so it doesn't really matter what we say. I, I would think that it does matter. Is it possible to at least request that, or let him know that um, we would like the chairman to be here with the vice chairman? Yeah, Is that fair? Did. You just did. And oh, you did? TV. So he's coming? No. I don't know. <laughs> you just made the request. You have the freedom of speech. Well, can you let him know? See, if it's, if it's this well, difficult here, so here in something like this, how much more difficult is it going to be in this whole process? So that's what I ask. Okay. Is it possible to, for someone to go out and... Um, yeah. uh, Senator Sloan went out well, and he came back? We can have his staff let him, let him know that, that you've made that. What is your name? Uh, Kaui Yohanan Amsterdam. Kaui Amsterdam. Kaui Yo Yohanan. Oh, I'm a, that's right. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Um, I am a Hawaiian Jew, uh, and as such, um, I feel that in terms of um, my background, the SB1 imposes dangers on the land and the people of uh, Hawaii. It violates, as my background as a Jew, um, the values, the moral values that are found through our prophets, through our scriptures, and our holy writings. You can see that the people of uh, Hawaii, like the people of Israel, have a religious and spiritual feeling about the land. And it's important to consider this. Thank you, Chairman, for coming back. Um, also, um, righteousness is clarified by these writings that we have as Jews. Also, SB1 violates Hawaii's um, uh, heritage. Ua mau ka'ea o ka'aina i kapono, in addition to bau kata donai, which uh, acknowledges our Lord God. Righteousness is expressed in this, but yet um, the, 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 um, the act violates the value of righteousness that is expressed in our motto. By this, we will have uh, repercussions. We've been asking, so what? Uh, what is the result? I would like to clarify that by have, passing this, um, this particular act, that the protection, divine protection that comes will be removed and we will be subject to danger and devastation. Um, the tsunamis, the earthquakes, the, the tidal waves, and all of the uh, economic um, problems that we have will surely come. Not if, but when. So I, propose, I, I request that we maintain our sense of righteousness through to, uh, traditional marriage and, and stop the danger that will be impacted. Those of you who vote for this are liable and accountable uh, for, uh, for, for the dangers that will come. So we want to mention that. For those who are, want to have, um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be done, thank you. For those who, who want to have this type of, of va these values, then realize, respect our people here in Hawaii and our values that have been here and established during the monarchy and go to the other places, do what you want to do, come back, and also um, put your pressure on the federal government thank, so that they will you. give you that way. So that we can stand as a light to the nation. Oh, uh, Sergeant at Arms. So. I'm almost done. Thank you. No, Sherman. you are done. Well, thank you very no, much. No, you are done. Thank you. And that's my testimony Sergeant in the name Arms, of the Messiah. Sergeant at Arms, if you need uh, help Mahalo from the sheriff. Mahalo and aloha. <clears throat> aloha. My name is Kali Fermentis. I'm from Haula. And I oppose same-sex marriage. And aloha is a word that says it all. I was taught in my, my home, in my community, in the Hawaiian community, in my community of faith, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that marriage is between a man and a woman. I stand here as a husband, as a man of faith, as a, with, a, with a wife that is a woman, as a father of six children, as Senator He, as one of your constituents, as a Red Raider for life, as an educator, as a Hawaiian, and as, as, as someone that loves has, was taught to love everybody. I, I acknowledge other people disagree on this issue. But it's because I love everybody, I think that I support traditional marriage. And by the way, like I said in my letter, my name is Fermentes. That's how it's, it's you, you misspelled it in your letter to me, Senator He. 
And that's why I came, and I'm glad you sit there. But, you know, it, it is troubling to see our senators not sitting there to listen to us testify. It says to me, you didn't do your job in the regular wrap session. It up. Didn't do your job in the regular session. Called a special session and not listening to us. This is how we think in Haula. Let the people decide and do it in your, do it in your regular time. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, one last time to please refrain from clapping. Up to this point, I think that it's been a very orderly uh, pro proceeding. I hope that uh, it stays orderly. Please proceed. Uh, honorable panel, I'd like to say thank you for hearing our voices today. I'm a parent in the, this wonderful state of Hawaii. I'm blessed to be here. But I do have concerns that this bill is affecting and will affect our school children. So that's why I oppose this uh, bill. My son, when, when he was in eighth grade, was told that in health class, a new group was going to come in and start introducing other things into the health class. When I was looking at his homework, I went to the school and said, I don't understand why they have to learn how to dress condoms as children and pretend that they're you know, in other kind of relationships. Now he's in high school and in 11th grade, another group comes into the school. He thought he was in a Christian club and the young men that were running the group said, anytime you don't feel that your parents understand you, you feel free to come and you can come to our place and we'll, we'll listen to you. So my son tells me he lost something at someone's apartment. So I go and find out what, is, what are you doing in someone's apartment? And I go there and- yeah, please wrap that up. Sure, I will. I go there and find out that there are gay people that have this apartment and they're letting children come over and the children are writing their names saying that they were there. I say something to the school and they, sit, they inform me that maybe I'm the problem as a parent because if he doesn't feel comfortable at home and he has to go talk to other people, the school has no problem with that issue. So that's why I oppose this because it's just the beginning of sorrows. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Clayton uh, He. My name is uh, Pastor Virginia. I'm out from the prayer center of the Pacific. I'm also a health care provider. I believe that, you know, you, you sit there and all the legislators, they see numbers, but I'm in the trenches. And I'd like to share an incident. Addressing the issue at hand, a young man lays in the hospital. He's ashamed, suffering, dying of full-blown AIDS because his lifestyle choices have been anal sex with another man. Yes, his partner was at his bedside with pain and sorrow. Their family all suffered. Their hearts were so heavy because of their choices. Who paid the hospital bill? He was unable to work for a long time. And this was self-afflicted. It's not about equal rights. It's about a lifetime choice. This is not natural. And it will affect the very fabric of our society. There's been no such practices since the beginning of society. It had always been a man and a woman in wedlock. Like everything else, did your committee, committee do an impart? impact study on society. There are facts coming out of Massachusetts and Canada on the same-sex marriage. It affects and its effects. Have you studied the facts and weighed the costs and how it impact the state of Hawaii as a whole? Don't, please, don't hastily decide. Hear the voice of the people. I hope and pray that you feel the conviction in your heart. We, the people of Hawaii, who you represent, want to decide as a, as a citizen. We want due process. Thank you. Vote no to same to SB four. Okay, thank you, uh, members. It's, One. It's uh, five after six. Uh, we'll take a short recess and reconvene at six thirty. Members, if you would uh, uh, follow me to the uh, exit.